So in this question, we want to predict the concentration of hydrogen gas uh, when we have one mole per liter of uh, hydrogen gas added to one mole per liter of iodine gas, and we're given the equilibrium constant. Uh, so the first thing you'd want to do is um, get an ice table, get things set up, and then we'll think of which of the three strategies we're going to use to solve this. So we have hydrogen gas plus iodine gas. So those are the two reactants stated in the question. And then we've got the fact that there's hydrogen iodide made. So this would be a formation reaction. And perhaps there's two hydrogen iodide. We are given the equilibrium constant. And that is 25, and there's no units to the equilibrium constant. I'm going to get my ice table set up, plug the values in, and then finally strategize. So we have one mole per liter of our two reactants. And that's all the information that we're told. Uh, there was no mention of the product at the beginning, so I'm going to assume that's zero. We're asked, what's the concentration of hydrogen iodide? That's a product. So I'm assuming, I have to infer, that this is going to be the equilibrium value. Anytime you're asked about a product, it would be at the end, not the beginning, that you'd want to figure that out. So we want to get to the end for hydrogen iodide. So strategy-wise, we don't have an I and an E, so we're not going to fill the whole ice table in. We don't have all the E's but one, so that strategy is out. This is when you have I's and you have a K value, and that's when you have to use the axis. No, not all the axis are going to be one, which is the big point of this example, doing one where we have two X in one of the changes because we have a two stoichiometric coefficient there. So I'm going to fill in all the C lines. We have one hydrogen gas, so we're going to have one unit of X change. Okay. Our product starts at zero, so that must go up, so this reactant must be going down. We have one iodine, so that's also going to have one unit of X. I'm just not writing the one in front of the X. But when we get to hydrogen iodide, there's a two in front. We're going to get double the change. Whenever we figure out the change of X, we're going to have double the change for hydrogen iodide. Okay, the same stoic that you've been doing uh, for a couple years now. That product must be going up. So now I can write out all my E's, but they're going to be algebraic, and I'll plug them into an equilibrium law expression. So we have, I want to simplify my E a little bit. That's 1.00. We want to remember those sig figs. Uh, but to make the board a little cleaner, I'm just going to go 1 minus x. So I've lost that sig fig information. Uh, we've got 1 minus x for our other reactant. Again, I, I dropped the sig figs to keep it cleaner. And we've got 0 plus 2x, so that would simplify to just 2x. I'm going to write the equilibrium law expression now. Kc, which we know, that's 25 is going to be concentration of hydrogen iodide gas. And that's going to be squared divided by our hydrogen and iodine concentrations. And they're multiplied together. So we can start plugging in Kc is 25. We don't know what temperature this is for, but whatever temperature this reaction is going at, it's 25. Concentration of hydrogen iodide. We don't know what this is exactly, but we know it's 2x. You have to be careful. I'm not done. We still have the square part. So I'm going to bracket that concentration and make sure I square my 2x. 
my denominator is 1 minus x would be my hydrogen concentration, uh, but my iodine concentration is also 1 minus x, so I'm not going to write it out twice, I'm going to square it. Uh, we have a square in the top and a square in the bottom, so I can pull that out and we're going to end up square rooting both sides again. So 25 equals, we're going to have a ratio, but I'm going to pull the square out of the top, pull it out of the bottom. So we've got 2x over 1 minus x. I've got that square can be gotten rid of if I square root that whole right hand side that will cancel out the square so I have to square root the left hand side. Square root of 25 is 5 the red square root in the square is gone so we have 2x over 1 minus x. So now we're just collecting our axis we're going to solve for x, but then x isn't our answer here. Okay. We're going to have to think a little bit about what exactly is our answer. So I'll cross multiply. So 2x doesn't get crossed with anything, so there'll be a 1, so 2x times 1 is just 2x. Okay. You can think of that as 5 over 1. Equals, we've got our 5 multiplied by this 1 minus x term. So 2x equals this 5 is going to get applied to both of the terms inside the brackets. So we have 5 minus 5x. We're almost done. I'm going to move all the x's to the left. We've got plus, minus 5x on the right. When I move it to the left, that'll become positive. So 2x plus 5x. When that term was moved over. So 7x equals 5. So x equals 5 over 7. Now I computed that ratio and I got 0 0.714. Now I didn't show my units all the way through the math, okay? but KC is unitless and all the concentrations have to be in moles per liter. Okay? Now a lot of students will make an error here. On a quiz you might stop here, but X is never the answer. It's a chemical that's the answer. And let's see, is X even the answer for our question? And it's not. We want the concentration of hydrogen iodide. And its equilibrium concentration is 2X. Okay. So we just have to realize to double that X and we're done. We'll have our answer. So the concentration of HI is 2x, so uh, you can double that number, and I got 1.4. Rounding now, I didn't carry my sig figs all through the problem, but that 25 equilibrium constant only had two sig figs, so that's why I'm rounding down to two sig figs at the very end. Even though the molar concentrations had three sig figs, that wasn't the limiting factor.